Okay, so now uh, um, it turns out this bracket notation is is extremely useful for a number of purposes. So let's let's look at um, how we'd write down a projection matrix. Uh, projection matrix P, which projects onto the state phi. So here's our picture, here's the state phi. And what we want is an operator, we want a matrix P, that given an arbitrary state psi, tells us how to project psi onto 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 this this vector so it it should give us so if we if we apply if you look at p times psi the result of p times psi should be this vector it's a projection of psi onto phi okay so what what is what is this matrix p which does this projection for us so p is Okay, so again, assume that psi was um, phi was given by this uh, this vector beta naught through beta k minus one. Then p is given to us by by this matrix, which is beta naught through beta k minus one times the corresponding row vector beta naught star through beta k minus one star. So this is going to be a k by k matrix, and um, you can check that this this will actually project any given given vector onto uh, onto phi. So how do we write p out in the ket notation? Well, it's just ket phi followed by bra phi. Okay? Now, if, if I were writing this quickly, if you were writing it quickly, the way we'd write it is phi, and then we'd put an x here, and phi. Right? And then you can read it as get bra phi. All right. So now this is p. So what's p times psi? So what, what happens if you apply p to psi? Well, we'll get that followed by psi. Okay, so and you'll notice in this notation we always omit the, you know, if you have two parallel lines, we just omit one of them. And now we can use associativity of, um, you know, of these, opera of these multiplication operations. And we can write this, instead parenthesize this, like this. So before we had, we were given this times phi, and now we can write it as this times that. And what's this? What's this quantity? Well, this is just the inner product. So this is just the inner product between phi and psi, which is this belongs to the complex numbers. The inner product is a complex number times phi. So what, what this tells us is when you project psi, when you apply this projection operator onto, onto the state psi, you get the state phi. Okay, so this is the state you get and, and except that it's, it's, um, it's a scaled version and what's it scaled by? It's scaled exactly by the inner product. Okay, so this is one of the nice features of, of this bracket notation, which is that the notation itself, you know, if something looks natural in the notation, it's actually a legal move and you are, you are allowed to do it. So it leads you in the right direction. Okay, let's see another example. So what happens if you apply this projection operator twice, if you apply this projection matrix twice. Well, okay, so let's let's look at the example. If you project the state psi and you project it twice onto phi, well, you project it the first time and you get this vector. And if you project it again, 
the green vector will not move anywhere because it's already um, it's already proportional to phi. So p squared should equal to p. So let's see how you know why why this is true. Well, what's p squared? It's p is that, and what's p squared? Well, we repeat that, and again we use associativity. So what's this middle term here? Well, this mid middle term is just it's just the inner product of phi with itself. And assuming that phi is a unit vector, this is equal to 1. And so simplifying, you just get this is equal to that, which is p. So p squared is equal to this, is equal to that, is equal to p. OK? So, so that's the really nice thing about the ket notation. Now, Let's let's go ahead and um, do one other thing. Let's let's recall that u is unitary is the same thing as u u dagger is u dagger u is the identity. And for finite dimensional matrices, actually one condition will follow from the other. Now, what are the properties of unitary matrices? So the properties are that the rows are orthonormal as are the columns. Okay, what what does this tell us? So one of the things it tells us is let's say this is this is our basis for the space zero one through k minus 1. And now we perform a unitary rotation on this. So we perform some unitary u. So 0 now goes to u times 0. The 1 state goes to u times 1. And, and the k minus 1 goes to u times k minus 1. Okay, so if we were to adopt some notation, so let's say u with two subscripts dot comma j, by this I mean the jth column of u. So what we what we can say is that this is the zeroth column and this is the Sorry, k minus first column, the first column, etc. Okay, so these are just the columns of u, and what we know is that the columns are are orthonormal, and so we started from orthogonal vectors and we moved to orthogonal vectors. Okay, so in general, we can say that u preserves angles or actually more precisely inner products what I mean by this is that if you start with two vectors phi and psi and this is the inner product and now let u times phi be equal to phi prime and u times psi equal to psi prime, then what we are claiming is that that the inner product between phi and psi is the same thing as the is the same as the inner product between phi prime and psi prime. Okay. How do we write this down? Well, you know what's phi prime is it's of course u times phi. So if phi prime is u times phi, how do we write bra phi prime? Okay, it's just a conjugate transpose, and you should convince yourself that it is this. It's um, it's bra phi times 
you dagger. Okay, so so this is really saying that graphi you dagger you psi is the same as phi psi, and of course the reason that's that's the case is u dagger u is the identity. 